So on this time, I went with the AMSOIL 5W30 on my oil change. Next time, I'll probably go with the 5W20 uh, to hopefully it would help prevent any of the cam phaser issue that you've been hearing. The EcoBoost uh, oil pressure hovers between 19 to 25 uh, PSI at idle. That's actually really low and it could be why we're having some of these problems. From talking to master techs at my dealer, the service manager and a few other people within the Raptor community, I really recommend that you do your oil change at 5,000 or less. If you off-road your truck uh, heavily or you get on it quite a bit like I do, I think you should do it as soon as 3,000 miles to just keep it healthy. Um, it's totally your choice, but those are our recommendations. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the tools you need a ratchet, a 10 millimeter socket, a T40, a oil filter wrench. You also need a 15 millimeter. I'm using the Amzol 530. I'm also using the stock Motorcraft oil filter. To get to the oil filter, you're going to use your T40. You're going to remove this plate right there because the filter is straight up above it and it's mounted horizontally uh, in there. You'll see in just a sec. So just go ahead, remove it. After that, you'll see your filter. Underneath it, there is a tray where you can actually drop your filter and let it drain. You can flip it upside down, leave it in there until it drained enough. And then you can remove it from back there and bring it down. It's going to drain for a while. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those two 10 millimeter bolts that already loosened them. Up there is where your oil pan is and your drain plug. You're going to need a 15 millimeter socket for this. I don't have the plastic pan. My truck was a April, 14, April 18 on build. Therefore it came with the updated aluminum oil pan. And we're going to take this off and let it drain. I let mine drain for about 20 to 30 minutes and then I'll come back to it. That way it drained all the way out. Um, now I'm draining the oil filter. I'm going to, I had it tipped over inside the plastic pan. It's going to drain in there. After that, uh, it starts to drain and it's finished draining. I usually grab a little bit of brake clean and I'll spray from the inside out, uh, from the top down inside out to clean this whole surface right there. Um, it drained for a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the new filter on. I'm gonna loop the gasket just a teeny bit, put a little bit of oil on it. I'm using again the factory uh, filter and it's an FL500S. This you can get from your dealer or you can find it on Amazon if you want to. I'm going to put a little bit of oil, but not a whole lot because remember it mounts horizontally. So you can't really put a whole lot in it. You will spill it out and it would be kind of wasted. After I installed it in there, I'm going to spray some brake clean around the area. Make sure I clean it all up to get rid of any excess oil. So it doesn't end up dripping into the driveway. And then you think you have an oil leak and it's simply just oil from your oil change. I'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit around the main skip plate. I'm going in from the passenger side. I might also do on the other side as well. Spray it, clean up as much as you can and get rid of that oil. So doing your oil change can be a lot easier than you think it is. However, if you actually take off the large black skip plate that goes underneath the oil pan, you will avoid having any spillage. If you have any questions about any maintenance item, please leave me a question in the comments or you can contact me directly. We've recently done a spark plug video, which I will leave a link for you as well. If you have, uh, if, if you looking for any recommendations, uh, if you're in the central Texas area uh, and you would like to know where you could take your vehicle, please let me know and I will post up also some recommendations in the video. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you.